And there it is. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I always am interested week. is to like has it is it does it start when it I does the know. weird thing or <laughs> I don't know, it after. seems like it but, would, but Hey everyone. <laughs> Happy Friday. We're so happy that you guys are here mm -hmm. with us tonight on uh, another basically Q&A with us here at uh, Around <laughs> the Table with T-Chef Mission. We should, we should come up with a name. What yeah. should we name these sessions? Yeah. Anyone. If you're watching the replay or if you're here on the live, regardless, throw out a couple names to us in the, in the, <laughs> the comments and we'll filter it out through the week and we'll basically <clears throat> come up with an see. idea of and pick, with the, pick see what the best. <laughs> It's like, but today we are going to talk about how to kind of have some tips for getting picky eaters to maybe try some new things. Yes, and I think that's a really <clears throat> good thing to, to bring up, especially because as we were looking at the poll, it was kind of a 50-50 split yeah. um, with how to basically get your family to mm -hmm. have more veggies and fruits, fruits which we'll cover. We'll and cover we can do that one. next week, I think. Yeah, either the next week or one of, one of the following weeks you know or who knows we might just make a youtube video on it it's, we, we do make <laughs> youtube videos on a lot of things but um <laughs> so within the zone of picky eaters you kind of have to like how we look at it when we're kind of cooking for people is like are we looking at are these picky eaters is it like family and friends is it kids Right. Are you looking at picky teens or, I mean, also, are you having someone who's going to be open to the idea of trying new things? Right. Because if it's somebody who's going to be open to the idea, they're going to be more receptive mm -hmm. than somebody who is really just against it or who's just really picky and doesn't mm -hmm. want it or let's say it's an allergy and of course you just want yes, to avoid that entirely because that's and that's another big thing so like of course within the realm of doing new ingredients you want to make right. sure that the person or whoever you are cooking for is not gonna have a bunch of allergies to worry about um so <laughs> once you know that it makes it a bit easier because yeah. like for us we have kind of gone about picky eaters in a few different ways yeah so if you're looking at kids uh some good ways of getting them to try it or <laughs> getting them my to brain have is it. like blank um is that you could make it sort of a game when you're at the store yeah that's one of the easiest ways is like let's say you're wanting them to kind of and this kind of plays along with fruits and vegetables but it's like let's say you're wanting them to try a specific vegetable or just you know any vegetable because maybe they only eat chicken nuggets and french fries or something like that right? right so you could just kind of get them involved in picking because if they're given more options of selection of what to pick, but you're also kind of guiding it, like maybe you're like, oh, okay, let's try a different protein or right. something like that, then they're more willing to do it because they are getting involved, so they're more interested. Yeah, no, that makes sense because then you're actually giving them that, that choice mm -hmm. of making the selection of what they're going to try that week. Mm -hmm. And like another way of kind of getting them to try it too is exploring the idea of, of within reason of what the ingredient is because like i'm right. not telling you to do this with chicken <laughs> this is like no. let's give the example of like broccoli right for sure trying it raw and then trying it cooked mm -hmm. because it's something you can eat raw clearly you don't do that with chicken right okay. and i think that's a really good so. tip because you can do that with a lot of different vegetables, vegetables. Yeah. now of course there are going to be some that you there are going to be some that you want to avoid doing that with um like beets potatoes things that um, need to get cooked things that and stuff should like that. be cooked mm -hmm. prior to actually eating but but that's one way so like getting your kids involved in the process and making it kind of fun yeah it's like for us like our kids have basically always eating what we eat yeah so and like they they kind of make the fun creatively with themselves like our son is 
broccoli as trees and we just went yeah. with it kind of thing because it was like you're having fun with it yeah so let's let's try <laughs> try that now when it comes to um as we get older right to that teenage to adult age sort of zone um as long as they're not like what's in this exactly that kind of thing and they're right. kind of open to things um a lot of times what we found because sometimes we work with picky eaters that so we didn't even know we're picky eaters it happens and we just made something and they came to find out that they tried something new yeah so sometimes if you just take an ingredient and put it in they're not going to even notice because like let's um, say for example with onions onions have a really strong scent and they can have a really strong flavor but if you cook them down long enough they can just basically melt into mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're making whether if you're cooking it in with beans like uh my mom would do or if you're cooking it into some sort of sauce um you can really just mask the onion into the actual uh dish dish yeah <laughs> i was like <laughs> my brain like, is like, like losing it. it i was like <laughs> did you need help with that word i did yeah so sometimes you can kind of just sneak ingredients in yeah. and it works out perfectly and it's kind of like sort of a surprise like you tried something new right. and you found out you liked it um and the other i i know that we were talking about this before we got on this was what you were saying about oh you want to slowly introduce <laughs> I was yeah like, come I, on my, this was your point i yeah. was like it's <laughs> yours tony <laughs> i i feel like i have really really bad memory sometimes, sometimes. and i feel like that sometimes is more almost all the time um you just have to like but i do my best to recall these things while yeah. we're on these on these lives and whatnot <laughs> but definitely if you are slowly introducing an item to somebody um i think that's the best way to do it is like in in small doses increments yeah, yeah don't because like you don't want to overwhelm somebody let's say with brussels sprouts and then all of a sudden well, their whole <laughs> side is nothing but brussels sprouts right so it's not just like mixed in right and where it, it could be mixed be... in with like a mixed veg medley right. We have carrots, potatoes, mm -hmm. onion, celery, some Brussels sprouts. Yeah, and I would also note that it, I would take that as like, let's say that someone was picky towards a lot of different vegetables and yeah. <laughs> and you like gave them this like massive amount of like we're all vegetables and stuff where it was just like, whoa, that's overload. Right. Um. So it's just kind of starting in small doses. Yeah, because if mm -hmm. you give them in small doses, then like I know growing up, I was never a real big fan of yuca. And it's something that my because my family's Colombian, just something that they always had um, at family gatherings at dinners. My mom used to make it all the time for us. Um, and again, it was just never my thing i didn't really like it growing mm -hmm. up and i think even still to today i generally don't have an issue with it i'll eat it here and there but it's not my favorite like i'm not gonna go out of my way to eat it mm -hmm. but it took time yeah and i think that's another thing is introducing these things to picky eaters it's gonna right. take some time well and i also think explaining the zone so like because this is something that we do with our kids but it i mean it works kind of overall yeah is um it's perfectly fine to not like something yeah but entirely taste it because it you try. don't truly know until you actually taste it so like and going back to the like kind of sneaking things in don't do that with ingredients that are very potent right i.e like beets <laughs> No. And beets because you can't hide you cannot hide that you can't because they also have the secondary effect that as they cook the juices will start seeping out and because of it those juices tend to dye things and well, tend yeah, to turn well, things color, to the color of, hey the color could be a cool thing oh but, it could be a really cool thing but, but at the end of the day it's still one of those like big big just honest woman i don't like beets <laughs> that's why i was thinking i was like, like don't do something that's gonna be super strong exactly. like for us things that we have like utilized 
for picky eaters trying to kind of introduce them um kale That's so like one. in salad you we can mix it in with other greens exactly and it's a very nutrient dense green mm -hmm. and it's also very hearty and yep. i know that some people are like oh it's it's not really that strong like especially no. if you're putting it in a salad i feel like arugula with... has more of a stronger flavor than kale in the sense that with it's arugula, a different flavor because arugula that really gets that peppery, peppery flavor yeah but so we've done that with that we have done it with goat cheese too but yeah. that that was also a time where we didn't actually realize the person didn't like goat cheese yeah. and they liked the dish so that was kind of the we're upside. like that's a win <laughs> we're like yeah that wasn't cream cheese it was goat cheese but you liked it <laughs> and sometimes so. people just don't realize that they don't like something or that they don't like something in a, Only specific, in a specific way, way yeah that it was prepared for them in the past so that's that's another thing too because sometimes when we're not necessarily as practiced at cooking yeah um we tend to overcook yeah and I ingredients mean, it and um so certain vegetables aren't going to taste as good when they're Overdone. overcooked yeah so like giving them a second chance when they're better prepared is giving yourself the opportunity of finding that you actually like it so that's one of the upsides of kind of like figuring out different ways that you can prepare something or like we said with doing the raw version as well as cooked for like mm -hmm. certain vegetables and things like that yeah and mm. of course like with the raw version there's always the opportunity that whoever it is may end up dipping it in something like i know with us Wyatt, he loves to be able to dip his trees into <laughs> basically any sauce, but specifically like the ranch. Mm -hmm. But then he just ends up licking the ranch off of it. Yeah, but he'll also... He also he'll eventually will, eat the tree. But he's also an interesting one where he'll eat like a <laughs> bell pepper or a tomato like it's an apple. Yeah. So We've he is very a much... He is very much a... Not... Elias is currently tending to be a bit more picky yeah but he's also younger so like another thing with younger kids is like a way to get them to try more is to continue to give it to them right so like if you keep putting things on their plate that are different not necessarily like every time but like let's say this week you chose bell pepper yeah as long as you're like giving it to them in different ways most likely they're gonna at least try it once mm, that makes sense yeah, so, like, in, and it's kind of the same, it kind of is the same way with adults, too, as if you're putting it into different ways, like, of cooking, they're going to try it. Yeah. And it just introduces more into your diet. Exactly. And I think that with, in, with the introduction of not only new ingredients, but old ingredients that you may not have liked in the past with the reintroduction of all of that into your diet, I think that it opens up so much more into what the food world can mm -hmm. offer you and what it can actually really show you how food can be an amazing piece of anyone's experience, especially around the table. Mm -hmm. And I will say like to that with like trying things you might not have liked before, because like even though you don't like beets, you'll still you'll still taste them. I continue to try them. As well as, like, he I doesn't like, like peanut butter and chocolate. Happen. I don't. So he still will be like, let me just taste this to make sure I still don't like it. But it's because, interestingly enough, like, isn't it, like, every seven years your taste buds, yeah, like, readjust it's... and change a bit? Mm -hmm. So, like, something that you might not have liked, your taste buds might shift. Yeah. And now you might actually be okay with it. And... I think that's a really interesting part, not only of the human body, mm -hmm. but of the way flavors can really mm -hmm. play um, a huge role in our lives as well. Because that's also another big thing. It depends on how things are seasoned. Because that is true too, yeah. your seasonings could really give you um, the flavor of it being a really good side dish or a really good vegetable. Or it could completely turn you off from mm -hmm. it because then you're not associating it with what seasonings were on top of it, but more so what it tasted like as a whole to mm -hmm. you. It's just like uh, when we cooked lamb. Yes. Because that can have a gaminess to it that oh, not everyone... But it was so good. Is, well, not everyone is about that. Yeah. 
Um, and sometimes for me, it can be too much, but like, depending on how you're seasoning it or cooking it and how long you're cooking it and things like that, yeah. you can avoid that. Yeah. And there's, of course, there's a million and one different ways to be able to get kind of workarounds on cooking different things in different ways to really either accentuate the flavor or make it um, something that's really good that you're going to really like or have the opposite effect and have make it something that you're really not going to be into <laughs> again. And I know, so this is just kind of me rambling a little bit. Um, <laughs> it, it makes me think of a couple friends that we had. Well, one that we had. We haven't spoken to her in a while. We try to check in with her every once in a while. But um, she was never a vegetable eater. She grew up in, like, the Oklahoma area and just didn't eat vegetables. But when <laughs> she would like, come over here... I don't think the here, Oklahoma part has anything to do with the vegetable but no, part. No, actually, mid, in the, toward, like, the middle of the states, they end up being more of, like, meat and potatoes. Well, yeah, and that's but nothing still, wrong with that. still It's a great diet. But, but anyways. Um, so she wouldn't eat colorful vegetables, I guess you would say. Um, but... <laughs> When she would come over our house, that's just that's just how we cook. We always cook with mm -hmm. different colors, different ingredients. And she would actually start eating it and realize, oh, crap, I actually do like vegetables. Mm -hmm. I just, and it again, didn't goes try, back either to, didn't try them or mm -hmm. they were, like we said. Cooked not in a way over, that or, actually worked. Or overcooked. Exactly. Because, like, and that's where a lot of people have not liked things. Yeah. Um. But we hope that if you're watching the <laughs> recording, definitely leave a comment down below so that way we can mm -hmm. see it and then we can go ahead and interact with you there. Um, again, if you guys have any ideas for what we should be calling these mm -hmm. Friday night talks with you guys, uh, we would love to hear it. Mm -hmm. Again, and leave it in the comments. If you have any specific, like, specific picky eater questions or anything like that put them in yes, the comments and do. we will come back and answer them please do because we always love being able to help and we always want to be able to offer the most that we can for everybody here and i know we're about to finish this live up and hope to see some comments so we can yeah. reply other than that have a great weekend you guys have a great weekend mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll be seeing a baby soon <laughs> you guys have a great night